Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Wondered what the Brits are rabbiting on about? Cockney. Uh, yes, I will be trying accents right now, so that's a warning. Warning you how fabulous I'm gonna be. Or why we love- Uh, hi guys, the original link to the video, top of the description, below that link to the Discord, we'd love to have you, Anglophenia, how to speak Cockney. Our China ever wondered what the Brits are rabbiting on about? Or why we love our China plates? Then join me as we take a butcher's at Cockney Rhyming Slang. <laughs> Anglophenia. Now, before we start, I should clear something up. Cockney, Dick Van Dyke uh... is not a Cockney. I know, let's just take a moment to deal with that. And I'm not just saying that because of his questionable Cockney accent as Bert the Chimney Sweep in Mary Poppins. As it turns out, you actually need much more than an accent to be a true Cockney. What makes a Cockney? According to tradition, a true Cockney is a Londoner born within earshot of the Bow Bells at St Mary Le Bow Church in the city of London, on a street called Cheapside to be precise. 150 years ago, the bells could be heard six miles to the east I think I have heard that before, but I, I forgot. To be precise. 150 years ago, the bells could be heard six miles to the east, five to the north, four to the west, and three to the south, which means that a cockney could come from Hackney Marshes, Lambeth, or even Camden. These are all very different boroughs of London, by the way. Cockney rhyming slang was originally used by street traders and criminals in the East End of London to disguise what they were talking about. No one really knows when it first appeared, but Cockney rhyming slang was certainly widespread by the mid 19th century. It has since escaped London and worked its way into our everyday lives here in the UK, and most of the time, we don't even know we're using it. How it works. Cockney rhyming slang has a pretty straightforward formula. Simply replace the word you want to disguise with a short phrase of two or three words, with the last one rhyming with the original word. You can then shorten the phrase to omit the rhyming word, which leaves you with a sort of code. For example, the word T was replaced with Rosie Lee. The rhyming part Lee is often dropped, leaving you with Rosie. Jeez, I, I just thought it was a... I just thought Cockney was another accent. Like, you just sound different. I didn't know it was a whole, uh, you know, it's whole the thing. The rhyming word, which leaves you with a sort of code. For example, the word T was replaced with Rosie Lee. The rhyming part Lee is often dropped, leaving you with Rosie. So it's totally normal to hear someone being offered a cup of Rosie. Just don't drink too many, otherwise you'll be desperate for a Jimmy Riddle. I'll let you work that one out. Jimmy Riddle. J it rhymes Diddle? <laughs> Other famous examples of Cockney rhyming slang include Adam and Eve, Believe, Dog and Bone, Phone, China Plates, Mates, Apples and Pears, Stairs, Duke of Kent, Rent. Although ironically, so stairs are, you want to go up the apples and pears? Oh, he probably doesn't have to pay any rent. 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 Although ironically, he probably doesn't have to pay any rent. And my personal favorite, Tommy Trinder, a comedian who was popular between 1930 and 1950 and whose name was used for window or winder, as someone with a Cockney accent would say. Yeah, that's how it's extra freaking difficult. Used for window. Tommy Trinder, window. Trindo, Trinda. Do or Winda, as someone with a Cockney accent would say. Sorry. I was helping one of me China's cleanest Tommy Trinders when I heard the old dog and bone ringing upstairs. I ran up the apples, picked it up, and would you Adam and Eve it? It was only the bleeding landlord asking for his Duke of Kent. Rabbit. Jesus Most Christ, man. Brits will understand that to rabbit on about something means to talk a lot about it. But many of us don't know why it means that. Chat well, it. it comes from the Cockney rhyming phrase, rabbit and pork, meaning talk. Porkies. Pork pies is Cockney for lies. So if you've told someone a lie, you're telling porkies. It's true, I promise. I do love how it's, it's a two, I love how like the extra piece of secrecy of it's it's a rhyming word but you you rhyme with the second word but you don't even use that second word you use the first word that you know 
because of the rhyme. That's cool. Barnet. Barnet is what we might use when talking about someone's hairstyle, but again, many of us don't know Barnet. that it comes from Barnet Fair, a famous horse fair in Barnet, which, yes, you guessed it, rhymes with hair. Simple, right? Well, maybe not. Whilst the majority of Cockney rhyming slang is based on obvious, if not somewhat peculiar rhymes, there are always a few exceptions. Bags of mystery. Bags of mystery is a popular example of non-rhyming Cockney slang and is used for sausages. Kind of leaves you wondering which unusual parts of the animal may have been used to make that good old-fashioned banger you're about to eat. So let's not dwell on that for too long. Porridge. Porridge is what we Brits... Where did banger come from for a sausage? So let's not dwell on that for too long. Porridge. Porridge is what we Brits call oatmeal, but doing porridge is a Cockney phrase for doing time in prison and is inspired by porridge being the standard breakfast for inmates. Porridge was the name of a popular British sitcom set in prison, which ran on the BBC in the mid-70s. Other TV shows which continued to bring a sprinkle of Cockney rhyming slang to their audiences were Only Fools and Horses and Steptoe and Son. Modern day Cockney. Due to more traffic noise and large buildings muffling the sound of the bow bells, the Cockney catchment area is smaller than before. But Cockney rhyming slang is still alive and well. And nowadays, you don't even need to be a Cockney to come up with new phrases. They seem to come from all sorts of places. New Cockney phrases are mostly influenced by names of celebrities. So the next time you're at a bar, you could order a couple of Britney Spears instead of beers. See, she really was born to make you happy. Or should that be Mary? If everything's going a bit wrong, you could say, oh, it's all gone a bit Pete Tong. Pete Tong is a well-known BBC Radio 1 DJ. Feeling a little confused? Yeah. Then you don't have a Scooby. That's right, everyone's favourite talking dog detective, Scooby-Doo, Scooby is the modern-day Cockney rhyming slang for not having a clue. This might also have meaning beyond a simple rhyme. I mean, let's face it, Scooby rarely had a clue what was going on half the time unless a Scooby snack was involved. Hey. I've been rabbiting on about Cockney rhyming slang all this time and I haven't even asked you if you have a favourite. Let us know in the comments. Remember you can follow us on Twitter and like our Facebook page too. Thanks for watching. Twitter. High bitter. It, it's a high. I get it. Oh you've Sorry. got to have a butcher's at this one. This one is totally Sorry. worth sharing with your china plates. You'll be rabbiting on about how good that one is. Stop it. I honestly haven't a Scooby what that one's about. Stop. Uh, great video. Oh, my God. I just... I had no idea, and now I'm overwhelmed. Hope you guys are doing well. I'd appreciate any comments at all, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Or bye. Uh, I'm not gonna...